All right, everybody, welcome back. Today I have my newest purchase that just arrived in the mail about an hour ago. I ordered the watch in May, and I just now received it in July. So <laughs> uh, I've been waiting a little bit for this. Um, let's see what we got. So I did open this just uh, for the record earlier, uh, just to take it out of the box and make sure that it wasn't broken or damaged or what, what have you. So uh, this is a Vostok, if you uh, are unfamiliar with the, the Russian language and the logos here, although it is in English on this user manual. We have a one page user manual. Looks like entirely in English, which is nice. And uh, I don't think I'll be needing any of this. It's blank on the other side, so. Could have just called it a, uh, a quick guide, really, because it's not, it's not a manual at all. It's just one sheet of paper, but, you know, it is what it is. Pulling the watch back into frame, uh, we have the highest quality of protective material. This isn't far from how I found the watch in the box, to be honest with you. It was um, wrapped around this uh, foam, kind of like this, but, you know, what's that really doing? Nothing. Uh, so move the box aside, I'll show you the watch right away so if I can get my camera to focus I think the watch is absolutely brilliant in terms of the colorway and how it looks and uh, just the design in general the chain link bracelet you know looked <laughs> it looked a lot better in the promotional photos that I saw on Amazon um, I did pay about a um, hundred or so maybe a little more than a hundred for this watch um, it is a Russian company if you're unfamiliar with the brand that was made, well, the original Amphibia was designed around 1967 or 1965, somewhere around there, um, late 60s, let's say. And it was designed for the Russian government uh, for use in military. I guess it was the Soviet government at the time. It is a diver design. I don't know if you could tell by the scuba dude, but it is a diver and it was designed to compete with um, Swiss divers at the time, but without any of the uh, patents or designs of the time. So this is kind of a unique watch and that there are lots of things about it that are kind of quirky and not like what you'd find in a Swiss watch. In general, very industrial, very cheap to manufacture, very cheap to, to use. Um, so we'll take another quick look at the case. Cool watch, dome sapphire, or not dome sapphire, it's uh, acrylic, but domed uh, crystal which I, I do love on divers. I love that look. Uh, the case back is pretty cool. Uh, from what I understand, this, this brand has a big watch mod community. This is my first one. I, I'm not familiar with these watches that, that well, but uh, lots of people swap the case backs out. They, uh, they do stuff with the dial and the bezel, and obviously I'm gonna get rid of this bracelet pretty much immediately. Um, very thin clasp, safety guard, uh, two, oh, it's three points of micro adjustment, which is actually better than Seiko, and no diver's extension, which is a little odd, actually. Usually even the cheap Chinese ones will give you a, a diver's extension. But moving on to uh, the watch itself, the blue is awesome. I mean, just look at that. The blue and the red seconds hand with the, with the bezel. Uh, oh, I will say, by the way, this is a bi-directional bezel with no ratcheting mechanism to keep it in place. Um, theoretically, I suppose you could use this to track your oxygen if you were diving, but um, it doesn't take much to move this. So I wouldn't recommend it. And let's go ahead and unscrew this crown. Got the signature floppy wobbly crown here, which um, is by design actually, believe it or not. They found that instead of adding crown guards here, they could just make the crown wobble, and that way if it gets struck or hit by something that it won't bend the stem. It'll only absorb impact here. Whether that works or not, I'm not sure. Uh, you'll notice actually applied indices on the dial, although they look to be very, very thin metal with just a strip of loom. Won't even bother looking at the loom really, and I doubt it's anything worth talking about. Um, so let's set the time. I already have it set to the uh, kind of marketing time that every watch brand used to show off the dial. Uh, you'll notice that the seconds hand is not running and that's not because it's a hacking movement, unfortunately. 
This watch just does not want to run for me. Like I said, I just got this out of the box. You saw how well packaged it was, right? So uh, unsurprisingly, this watch is not, uh, not running. And I'll go ahead and screw the crown back down and unscrew it again and see if I can get a winding. I'm winding, I'm winding, I'm winding. Obviously off camera, I've already wound this thing like 45 times, but uh, it is not starting and I don't want to keep winding it all day. Um, this watch is just dead on arrival, unfortunately, which is uh, unfortunate because I actually do really like the watch and I wanted to wear it. Um, I waited two months for it, paid over a hundred bucks and it shows up dead. And the worst part is that Amazon won't even let me file for a refund. I, uh, I request, requested um, a return or a refund because it was damaged and uh, they said it's not eligible for a return or a refund for whatever reason, I'm not sure. So I left a review on the watch itself on their Amazon page and I sent the seller a message. I doubt I'll hear anything from that, but you never know. Maybe they'll send me another one and I can get that in two months. Uh, obviously with everything going on over there, it's not that unexpected that the mail is taking a little bit longer to get here than usual. Uh, but this is a cool brand with a lot of cool history. Um, these are super popular watches for the price very industrial, very workhorse type watch. I'll probably end up popping the back off this thing and messing around with it inside just to see if I can get it running again because I already paid for the thing. It's already here and I can't return it apparently. So maybe this will be my first watchmaking project. See if I can get this thing going. But, uh, but yeah, unsurprisingly, two pieces of foam and, uh, a cardboard box did not protect the watch from internal damage. This is literally how the watch was shipped. It just came inside of one of those uh, plastic bags, basically, with this inside. So I'm sure that in two months, it was thrown around quite a bit by Russian postal carriers and then customs and then U.S. Postal Service, which is all, you know, government postal services, man. What are you going to do? So, yeah, I think that's all I have for today. I guess I'll finish off the video by showing you what I am wearing today that actually does run. And that's my 1996 Omega Speedmaster Reduced. And if I can get the watch to focus, there we go. This is one of my favorite watches. I have uh, three of these Reduced, all in Schumacher editions. Uh, love that Hesselite crystal dome, just like that Vostok, which, you know, classic look there. It's not a dive watch, obviously, but... You know, it's the only one I'm wearing today that runs. So that's that's that. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.